How did we go from this to this? And how much longer until this is possible? Since cell phones were first introduced to the consumer market in the early 80s, they have evolved drastically in both form and function. Here is how. The Dynatac, the first ever commercial mobile phone, was introduced in 1983. With the growing accessibility of cellular networks in the late 70s, Motorola realized the feasibility of bringing mobile telecommunications to the world. After successful forays into developing car phones and bag phones, work began on designing a truly mobile phone. Thus, the Dynatac was born, in all its plastic, brick-like glory. It was big. It took 10 hours to charge and only had 30 minutes of talk time. It had a dim LCD display that you couldn't read under direct sunlight. It wasn't practical at all by modern standards. And yet, if you asked a business person whether they'd rather use a Dynatac or one of those accursed bag phones, he'd pick the Dynatac every single time. It hit U.S. store shelves in 1983, priced at a whopping $3,995, or $10,400 in 2020 dollars. The sheer novelty of having the mobile phone was not lost on the yuppies and executives that could afford it, even if its pricing made it inaccessible for the mass consumer. This gave Motorola the go signal to continue manufacturing and selling the devices, as well as investing in research and development. The first major revision to this initial design came in 1989 with the Microtac. It was a fraction of the size of its predecessor and cheaper too, though not by much. It retailed at $3,000. Still, its compact design would serve as a template for other manufacturers to follow. Going into the 90s, cell phones continued to evolve. This was facilitated by further advancements in cellular network technology, namely the transition from analog to digital technology. Going from mobile radio telephone tech to the GSM standard was a significant step forward. The standard was first adopted in 1987, with the Orbitel TPU900 being the first GSM phone to hit the market. This is when the second generation of cellular networks or 2G networks began rolling out. Perhaps the most significant innovation of this generation is how it allowed users to transmit small packets of data across the network. Users could then transmit messages over Single Message Service or SMS. Manufacturers began designing phones to have bigger displays to ensure text messages were readable. Users could also download custom ringtones and sometimes even play simple games on their phones. If you got tired of playing Snake all day, at least you had options. These second generation phones also began to vary widely in design as manufacturing costs went down, allowing manufacturers to experiment with the form of cell phones. This worked out with varying levels of success. Continuing in the 2000s, the leap from 2G to 2.75G wireless networks led to improvements in speed. Starting at GSM 64 kilobytes per second, speeds of the second generation range from GPRS's 114 kbps all the way to Edge's 384 kbps maximum speed. Each improvement in speed allowed the transfer of more information over the network. Now users could send each other music, photos, and even video. This improvement paved the way for the introduction of the smartphone. These were devices that did more than just call and text. You could take photos on them, listen to music, watch movies, play games, and even connect to the internet using proprietary apps. Blackberries, Sidekicks, N95s. When looking at devices from this time, it can be startling to see just how familiar they still feel and how much manufacturers got it right with the designs and features they offered. In 2007, nearing the end of the second generation, a new company threw its hat into the ring of cell phone manufacturing, Apple. Previously known for its innovations in the computing industry, the company now unveiled a phone, not just any phone, the iPhone. While touchscreen phones had existed in some capacity before, none were quite as usable as the iPhone. Clearly, their expertise in optimizing user experience paid off. 
the iPhone went on to take over the entire smartphone industry. The next generation of cellular networks facilitated an even greater leap forward for cell phones. With the rise of 3G, cell phones gained better access to the internet. This is when phones started to truly resemble computers. Things like video streaming and video calling began to grow in popularity during this time, even though they were still emerging technologies. By popular demand, Apple unveiled the App Store, where developers could publish and sell applications. Clients included social media companies, game developers, and so much more. The possibilities were and still are endless. Google's Android operating system also started growing in popularity around this time, giving other phone manufacturers the capability to compete with Apple in the burgeoning smartphone market. In 2014, 4G wireless networks began rolling out around the world and further increased the data transfer rate available in phones. The smartphone industry really began to mature. Phone design stopped varying as much, with most phones resembling some variation of the original iPhone design. Companies like BlackBerry tried to cling on to relevance with their QWERTY keyboards, even if they stopped being a novelty and started becoming a hindrance. Thanks to the availability of responsive, capacitive touchscreens, consumers began gravitating towards phones with bigger, higher quality displays. During this time, manufacturing giants such as Qualcomm and Samsung started their ascent into becoming the global players they are today. Today, the smartphone industry is in an interesting spot. There's something for everyone now, with different manufacturers highlighting different features on their flagship devices. Love taking pictures and hate bloatware? Google has you covered with their Pixel lineup. What if you want a lot of options for lenses, as well as a high-quality audio solution in one device? LG's now-retired V lineup commonly featured four camera systems, as well as a high-quality digital-to-analog converter during a time when manufacturers started phasing out the headphone jack. Just like in the days of yore, manufacturers are using the high-end luxury market to competitively test new technologies. 2019 saw the introduction of phones with folding displays, starting with the Royal FlexPi. Samsung also unveiled the Galaxy Fold to mixed reception during this time. And in 2021, its refined version became the foldable phone to beat. Somewhat fittingly, one of the manufacturers trying their luck in the folding screen arena is Motorola. They released a refreshed version of the Razer in 2020. Just like its predecessor, it's a flip phone, only this time, the interior of the phone is all screen, a perfect marriage of old and new designs. With 5G currently being rolled out and 6G reportedly in the works, manufacturers will definitely take advantage of these exponentially faster speeds. Phones of the future could be equipped with holographic displays, flexible frames, and use sustainable methods of charging, such as kinetic energy. AI could also turn your phone into a proactive executive assistant, organizing your time and anticipating your needs. As technology advances and materials become increasingly cheaper and accessible, there really is no limit to the future of mobile phones.